Right. Got all my lip balm on. We're ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> so welcome to Fuck It Perspectives. This podcast is from company IE Hub. My name's Tanisha Osu. I am the Senior Marketing Coordinator at IE Hub and I'm joined today by Jack. Hello, I'm uh, just joining Tanisha for a few weeks as an intern doing a little bit of marketing, a little bit of everything else and a little bit of context me and jack have actually been friends for god how many years now since the start of uni like 2017 um, 2017 i think but then we had that like we had that group chat didn't we for like nine months before that or something so yeah so yeah. long like eight years <laughs> something like that crazy um yeah. so we've known each other for a very long time and you know we always have chats like this and we go in depth and have these deep discussions and we thought why not publicize it let's let's make mm. it public um so we're here today to kind of talk all things money so if you didn't know IE Hub is a company that helps people manage their money and um, manage their debts and finances benefit checks all them good things and um we thought we would kind of open the conversation about money talk freely about our own perspectives hence the name and <laughs> just share some insights um we're not advisors we are very not professionals um, oh, yeah, and we're, we're just just, oh, just gonna talk <laughs> yeah we're just chat we're just here for a chat we're marketing girlies so we're not yeah. here to, <laughs> to provide any form of advice this is just kind of our own perspectives um and we'll obviously share some little snippets of um education but i'm not here to bore you i'm not here to sit you down and give you a full lesson um just kind of sharing our aspects of different topics um so today we thought quite topical um i am nearly 25 jack is 25 which means we're still class as young adults and i'm gonna grasp onto that name <laughs> as long as I yeah. can and we thought it would be very nice to talk about financial education in young adults because we both share the opinion that it's kind of not really talked about I think a lot of young adults no, yeah. our age and younger just don't have that education or that understanding of a lot of topics about money and debt and credit so we thought mm. we'll just kind of a brief discussion about it and yeah just open up the world of money so I thought we'll start off, get to know us a little bit, and we'll share our downfalls in terms of money and where we went wrong. Um, so I left home when I was 18, went to university, went to Newcastle. And before that, I'd had a part-time job as a sales assistant in a clothes shop. If anyone knows, knows Select Fashion, it's a very, um, very cool brand. Um, so I worked there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Do you know it? Yeah, we had one of them in Grimsby. Yeah, yeah, and not a lot of people know about them, but um, I worked them there in my little town, and I'd do shifts alongside college, so it wasn't in a lot. I think back then, minimum wage, and I'm so like I'm sure like four pounds something an hour, which is absolutely crazy thinking back. Yeah, when you think back, yeah. Yeah, so I technically did have my own money like at that age, but it just wasn't a lot. So then going to uni and then people tell me about this thing called an overdraft and I've never heard about this before, but I thought, you know, let's have a go. It's £2,000 you're going to give me for absolutely nothing. Mm. I'll take it, you know. So went to the bank and I signed it all off and <laughs> I left on my way buzzing <laughs> with all this money. I start uni, turns out people go on nights out a lot and people splurge on yeah, just treating myself. That. Yeah, I needed a new <laughs> laptop, I needed a new notebook, I needed these fancy pens that were like £10 each that no one actually needs. Um, yeah. So I ended up just spending all my money, to be honest, like just to put it bluntly. And it just kind of went. And then I was like, oh, wow, um, my student loan doesn't actually give me that much more disposable income. Um, it kind of pays my bills and that's pretty much it. So what am I going to do? Now I'm at, like, I'm maxed out my overdraft. Um, so I ended up having to get a part time job, didn't I? And, you know, I worked as a kind of a receptionist for student accommodation, which was great. Not a lot of money because I obviously had to work alongside studies, but it helped me kind of survive, I guess. Um, and I think I look back and I was basically in and out of my overdraft. I would get my student loan in or I'd get money from my job and I'd slowly start creeping up into the positive numbers and then I'd slowly start falling back down again. And it was just a cycle for pretty much three to four years. And um, when I graduated, I was like, oh, I've still got this minus number. I've still got this overdraft. Like, what am I going to do? So, you know, I ended up having to get 
a job and doing it alongside my masters um so I was working full-time studying full-time which I do not (laughs) it was so rough I do not recommend that to anyone um but I purely did it because I was like I'm gonna have to get out of this overdraft I can't go into you know adult life um I ended up staying in Newcastle with my partner um I didn't go back home and kind of live with family so I was like I've I've got bills to pay like I need to get out this overdraft so I can earn money and pay my bills and not be in debt so you know I did and it was it was tough on my mental health and just time wise I had no free time at all for a good six months just to get out of that overdraft and if I had that education and knowledge before taking it out then even if I did take it out because it definitely did help I would have known how to manage it better and not think that you know it's available to me so I can max it out and even though you technically can doesn't mean that you should and I didn't understand that. I didn't know what interest rates or APR or anything like that was. And even if the people at the bank did explain it to me, I didn't listen. 18-year-old teacher did not care. I was just like, I'm just going to splash, spend it on myself, treat myself. Yeah, just free money. Um, <laughs> yeah, but I treated myself a bit too much, Jack. So yeah. <laughs> um, that was kind of my story. And I do wish I was a lot more sensible with it. But, you know, we have this story to share on the podcast, so maybe it was worth it. <laughs> exactly, yeah. You can use it to steer people away from doing the same thing um I I was pretty much in the exact same situation like I'd had jobs before I came to uni but it was just it was minimum wage stuff and I was working part-time just just for something to do and to get some experience and things like that so I had a little bit of money but it was never on the level that I had when I suddenly had this two thousand pound overdraft so I can fully Mm -hmm. relate to you there but um my issue not my issue but my my financial sort of story from my end is probably the situation I'm in now so I've moved back to Newcastle after going home through Covid and all that but we don't want to talk about that anymore (laughs) (laughs) um and it's just been it's been quite difficult going from living at home with pretty much no bills to now living here paying all these bills by myself with quite a small income due to other things that have happened um so it's been quite difficult to manage my money I always thought I was quite good with money like I know I can spend I do like a bit of shopping but um (laughs) I thought I was quite good at like making sure I had enough but when you're getting paid this like x amount and then your bills are twice as much as what you're getting paid like it's just if you've got no experience of that before or you've not been educated with that how am I supposed to deal with that like what no. am I, how am I supposed to know what I need to do to so there is things out there like you can you can get benefits and things like that but it's all still quite current and it's still something that I'm working through myself but yeah um it's just it's just difficult knowing how to manage your money properly and I think discussing these these ways that you can educate yourself more and, and our personal opinions on things and, and what we've experienced is, is going to be quite helpful I think Definitely, definitely. I don't know if you feel the same, but I think when you're like worrying about money and things like that, it's kind of always there. Like, and it's like it yeah. just follows you around, isn't it? And like, you're just be eating your tea, just going on with your day, and then you're like, oh wow, I've, like I've got to do this, I'm going to yeah. do that. Like, it's never clear. But just sticking on the you know the topic of like um, overdrafts and credit cards and just credit in general, um, I thought I'd share a little bit of information that is actually quite useful to know. Um, so APR. And you probably hear the term flying about if you've ever took out an overdraft or a credit card or any form of credit, you'll see in the smallest, smallest, tiniest writing <laughs> at the bottom um, and it'll tell you what your APR is and it'll, there'll be percent- percentages and numbers and all that. And it'll be quite overwhelming when you look at it and it's just so confusing. Um, so just breaking it down, APR is your annual percentage rate. So it's basically the total cost of borrowing money on an annual basis. So I think some people think it's basically just your interest rate because obviously you lend money you're gonna have to pay some interest on that but it's not just the interest rate there is actually normally additional fees associated with the credit that people don't consider Mm. so the APR is basically all of that combined so for example I um, really want a MacBook and it's a thousand pound just over a thousand pound and you know I'm trying to save for it because I personally don't want to take out like a loan or a credit card or anything for it I thought you know I'm gonna work hard and save as much as I can to then be able to go into the Apple store put down that 1000 pound on the desk (laughs) and walk out with my macbook um 
so if you did want a laptop and say that you did want to take out that credit for it and it's worth a thousand pound you can obviously compare them online there's so many amazing sites where you can compare different loans different credit cards and one thing that you should really really look at is the apr so say if you want that thousand pound from one site and the apr is 25 percent, and then you're taking out that loan out for one year the total repayment for borrowing that one thousand pound is one thousand two hundred and fifty because obviously that's twenty five percent of a thousand so monthly you'd pay about one hundred and four pound but then say if you saw a different site same one thousand pound that you're borrowing but the apr is ten percent and again for one year you'd actually repay one thousand one hundred pound and that difference, you might think, oh, £150 a year split over, um, but the monthly payment does go down to £91. And that difference of, what, say, £15 might not seem wild per month, but when you've got mm. so many of the bills, bills are increasing so much. Say you've got other debts, other credit that you're paying off, that £15 yeah. can make a massive difference. Yeah, the individual savings just... If you've got that in each other bill that you've got, it's just gonna it's gonna add up, isn't it? And you could end up saving like fifty, sixty quid on your bills if you've got ten bills and you're saving a fiver on each. Yeah. Like it just it does add up, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. And I think it's just so important to look at because you might just say, Oh, this is this is great, like this is a great offer, let's just get this thousand mm. pound while I can. But if you don't shop around, yeah. so if you do want to take up that credit, um, just shop around, just spend that time looking at different what other people can offer you. Just doing like spending 10 minutes just comparing is just quite useful to do. So useful. And I think as well, I've seen a lot of cases where people will say, you know, 0% APR for the first three months and then it mm-hmm. goes up to like 50% APR. Yeah. And that is wild. That is crazy. <laughs> people just see that 0% and they're like, yeah, free money, let's go. Yeah, yeah. And then three months in, you're paying 50% of that back. And people will see the zero percent for now as oh it's it's great for now like I, I've got the zero percent now but if you you'll be able to somehow look at the total amount that you will repay back via yeah. the two different methods yeah and you'll probably see that the one that started on zero percent is probably higher in the end like you'll actually pay more by the end yeah so it's it's good to know what you're looking at yeah just considering I think a lot of this boils down to people thinking about the now and not thinking about the future because that's definitely what I yeah. did and that's why I got myself in that situation yeah. <laughs> Um, so just think about future you because future you will thank you very much if you can reduce your interest exactly. or APR um, by as much as possible. On the topic of, of sort of APR and interest and things, another big thing that I think people worry about is like a credit card. Mm-hmm. So for me, for ages, I was like, I'm not getting a credit card because as I mentioned earlier, like I like shopping. I've got a bit of a, a habit for shopping. If I'm feeling down, I'll go shopping. Yeah. And that's obviously not good for my bank balance. Mm-hmm. Hence, it's not good for having a credit card because that's not my money. So when you have a credit card, it's good to know that it's not. Some people think oh, people get a credit card so that they can buy what they want, so they can get the things they can't afford. But it's useful for other things as well. So a credit card as a major tool is a major tool for building your credit score. Mm-hmm. So with things like the loans that, that Tanisha was talking about for a laptop, they when they're checking to see if you're okay to have that loan, they might check your credit score, which is, if you don't know what credit score is, it's basically the likelihood that you're going to repay that money back. So it's based on your past transactions and payments and things, all sorts of different things about you as a person. And then the companies that are managing the credit scores will work out a score for that so the lower your credit score the less likely these lenders and these banks and things are going to think that you can pay that money back to them so having a credit card can help you build your credit score in that you put a a bill or you buy something small on it and then you pay it off on time and then the the lenders will see that you're doing that and they'll be able to to have trust in that so i've cleared my voice um so we've discussed APR and, and getting a loan for something and considering what the interest that you're going to pay is. But another thing that you'll have to consider APR in is credit cards. So we've put together like a short list. I'll go through what we think is important when responsibly using a credit card. So, yeah, so we've discussed APR and the importance of getting the best deal for yourself. But we're going to talk about 
responsibly taking out credit now. So when you do take out credit, there are a few things that you need to sort of consider when you're doing it. Um, part of that as well is to understand your credit limit. So we people say with your credit limit that you should aim to spend 30% or less of the limit that you've got. So as an example, say your limit is £100 for your credit card. Um, you would want to aim to only spend £30 a month on that, which is 30% of 100. And that's how you maintain a healthy credit score and how you build that up. No, I think that's so important. And, you know, other things to consider are pay on time, um, late payments massively affect your credit score as well mm. as minimum payments. When you're paying that min- their minimum payments, um, you often end up paying a lot more interest because the debt obviously lasts for longer. Um, so yeah. the interest rate is just going to accumulate. So if if you do end up in a situation where you're accumulating a lot of credit card debt, it can have sort of a domino effect. Um, so one thing that you'll notice is that you'll have a lot of the, the loans or the credit that you're trying to go for, it's going to be higher interest. So you're going to have a limited access to some of the lower interest loans. So even even if you're approved by a loan company and you think, yeah, that's amazing, you're going to find that they're going to maybe double the interest rate that you were expecting. Um, So in turn, that means you're going to be paying more overall. Um, Another thing is we're going to touch on it more next week, but just your mental health. Like if you're accumulating credit card debt, that's going to be right at the front of your mind all the time. Like whatever you're doing like Tanisha said earlier you could just be sat eating your tea scanning your chicken chicken nuggets or whatever you're having Stunning. and you're going to be thinking about this one thousand pound that you owe for that macbook that you bought from the apple store yeah and it's just going to be it's just going to stress you out and that leads to other issues which we'll go into more detail next week but um yeah that's that's a major thing i think at the minute especially with covid just coming out of the back of covid a lot of people were out of work like yeah a lot of mental health issues came out of that yeah there were a lot of things that that come from having this accumulated debt so to be responsible with it is really important there's a lot of ways to handle debt so say if you're in that position and you know you're really struggling and for whatever reason you got in that position there's so many different reasons the Mm. most important thing is trying to get yourself out of it and you know not putting that that blinkers on and kind of just pretending that it doesn't exist and I think a lot of people um fall into what we call debt fatigue so where you're just so exhausted and just mentally like just done in with like all of this stress that you just don't want to deal with it and you just kind of pretend that it doesn't exist and then that's when things can happen such as collections and bailiffs and enforcement and it's things that you ideally just want to avoid as much as you can and there's so many people out there who can help um and you know there's resources available completely free of charge which obviously we'll touch on later um but if you do think you know i can do this myself i want to be able to manage it so many different strategies online just give it a quick google and there'll be so many different ways of handling it but some um methods that i thought i'd touch on today is the snowball method and the avalanche method um So the snowball method is basically you pay off your smallest debts first, regardless of interest rates. So I'm definitely not recommending that you ignore your interest rates, because as we've we've mentioned quite a lot, they are so important to consider. Yeah. Um, But one way to do it is kind of list all your debts from smallest to largest like I said kind of regardless of interest rates and then you ideally want to pay the minimum payments on all of them debts and I know we did say before avoid paying the minimum payments but if you're really like struggling financially and that's all you can afford that's all you can afford and you've got to kind of just do it on your situation um so if you paid all minimum payments on all the debts just to make sure you know it doesn't go into arrears um and fall into enforcement then you can put whatever you've got left after you've budgeted and found out what disposable income you have left, pay all the minimum on all of them apart from the smallest one and put everything you've got left after you, you know, you've got enough money to live and survive and pay what you need to pay. Put all that money onto that smallest debt. So then that debt's probably going to get paid obviously much quicker and the others are just mm. kind of getting sustained. And then when that smallest debt's then been paid off, you then focus on the next smallest one. So this one, some people might think like, why would you do that? Why wouldn't you focus on the big ones, try and get them out the way first? And this 
method is more so for people who kind of need that like psychological boost that serotonin release when you've paid off that small debt even though it's small it's a quick win because obviously you're going to pay it off faster because it's smaller so if you need mm. them little wins to go you know oh my god that's amazing i've paid this off now let's do the next one let's do the next one this method might be more for you However, you know, as I said, you're leaving them bigger ones to accumulate. And because if you're not really focused on the interest rates, the interest is likely to build up. Um, and then if you're prioritising the high interest debts later, you'll probably end up paying just more overall. There are ways to kind of combat this. So, for example, breathing space, which is something that the, um, the government put in place where, you know, creditors have to legally allow you a bit of breathing room to, and let you figure out your financial situation for a brief period of time so and some companies may even decide to pause your interest rates but the most important thing is communicating with them but obviously there's no guarantees mm. so if you think you're someone who would prefer a different method you can also do the avalanche method which is basically paying off the debts with the high interest rates versus this when you focus on interest rates so obviously the aim of this is to get rid of as much interest as possible um, so similar to the other one, but you just list all debts from the highest to the lowest interest rates and then you would pay, again, the minimum payments on all of them, if that's all you can afford. And then the one with the highest interest rates, you'd be more um, aggressive with that and try and pay that off as much as you can. Obviously, if it's got a higher interest rate, chances are it'll take you longer compared to the snowball method. So this one is for people who kind of have the logic of I want to pay as little as possible for this entire time. Um, and if you aren't the type of person who would prefer them quick wins or need them like little boosts of serotonin, maybe this one is more for you. Um, so obviously that's the disadvantage of not having that kind of psychological advantage. Um, but you'll probably save money in the long run and get it paid off um, quicker. I think... I could see myself like in both of those if, if that makes sense like there's parts yeah. of both that I would want yeah. so if, if there's like a hybrid method that would be you know like a, yeah. a way to just combine them together yeah and there definitely is you know there's different ways so potentially people may start on the snowball method and get them quick wins and know you know get them messages to yourself saying I can do this I've done it once I can do it again I can do it again and then mm. once you're in the, a more positive mindset and you're kind of out of that debt fatigue and out of that rut maybe then you can switch to the avalanche and go you know yeah now let's try and pay as little as possible and just kind of balance it as you go that's probably what I would do I think yeah sounds like yeah. A, a good idea for me <laughs> definitely I mean I'm such an emotional and like psychological person I need that little boost of motivation so yeah I agree I think a, a combination yeah. would be amazing for me but I also think as well if I was in that situation and I had so many debts I'd have to get some help I think it'd just be so overwhelming for me and I'd want to make sure that I'm doing yeah. it all right and I think I'd definitely reach out to maybe an organization for help there's so many different ways that you can get this whether it's professional help or just someone to talk to or a charity or or anything really but so there's, there are digital platforms out there so IE Hub um, they offer an online platform which is free to use you don't have to pay for it and it's just a way for you to to manage your finance so they offer things like budgeting you can check for benefits and a major part of the, the service is that it can communicate with the creditors as well so say if you've got 10 different companies that you owe these debts to or you're paying bills to these companies whatever when you fill out an i and e form an income and an expenditure form on ie hub you can then choose to share that form with all these other companies that you're paying and then they can get in contact with you to arrange a payment plan or or figure out the best way for you to pay back these debts in the, in the, the best way for you possible um, yeah, definitely and also it doesn't have to be debt so say if you know you are struggling financially and you need to tell your water company or your energy company yeah. that you think you will eventually fall into a raise or you think you'll start to struggle being as open as early as possible is the 100% the best way to do it it's better than yeah, getting six months down the line and you're in all this debt and then you're overwhelmed and then you have to do it and you're kind of almost forced into it because you've got no other choice like doing mm. it when like as a preventative before you get to that stage would be so good yeah, definitely be prepared. 
Yeah. And it's it's convenient as well because it's once you've done it the first time, it's there. You can access it and you can edit it, amend it, do whatever you want with it. But just getting it organised and set up when you're in the sort of milder stage of yeah. starting to struggle, then it's it's going to be a lot more less stress stressing for you. Yeah. Um. Another thing that you can do is something called Citizens Advice. So it's a service that's offered nationwide. Um, it's advice basically on various issues, including debt, housing, employment, all sorts of things surrounding finance. Um, mm. And there's different regions have their own sort of citizens advice service. Yeah. Um, so they have experienced advisors which can provide solutions to you. So it's not just generic advice, it's actually personalised to your situation. So they're going to sit and listen to your situation and they'll help you figure out the best way to approach your financial situation. Um, And then just an example of a charity, one that's quite good, actually, it's called Step Change Debt Charity. So they provide they provide a free debt service and they can actually sort you out with a debt management plan. So that will obviously get you set up, ready to have your repayment plans for your debts makes it easier for you to manage those multiple debts so you don't have to figure it all out yourself you can get someone to help you do it Mm -hmm. so there's so many things out there I think if wherever you look if you google I'm struggling with this it'll come up with a list of of different things that you could do to help different charities that are there or different companies that can help you out I think there's no limit on the help that's out there for financial stuff One of the most important things with all of this is kind of the shame. Like it's Mm. normal to feel shame, but you shouldn't feel shame. You shouldn't feel embarrassed because millions and millions of people are in the exact same boat. And even though people might not talk about it because it's, you know, quite taboo or, um, you know, as British, we're quite like, "Mm," and we don't want to discuss our personal life, you know. Um, But just know that you're not alone. So many people are going through it. You know, you see the stats Mm. every day of just, especially with the current cost of living crisis, like it's just crazy. Um, So, you know, no matter what age you are, don't feel shame of not knowing things because, you know, it's just about taking them steps to educate yourself and learn because unfortunately yeah. right now I mean I don't know it might have changed since we were in school but I mean when we were in school no one taught us anything like that um so you know no. it's not your fault that you, you weren't taught it but it's just you know at the, the time when you can go and get that more information do it yeah definitely and if you think like if you think there's anything we've missed that we've not talked about that you think oh I'd love to know a little bit more about that just let us know yeah. um just give us a shout and we'll be doing more of these episodes so we can if you suggest a topic and it's loads of information on it we'll do a full episode on it like we're here to we're open to new things that we haven't considered so if if you've got anything that you want us to cover just let us know definitely ie hub is all over social media we'll link it below um but use hashtag pocket perspectives if you do want to create any content and tag us in it or send us a message on the ie hub social media account and we'll be more than happy to have a chat and share some insights um and yeah so we're going to be back like jack said um for the next few weeks to touch on a different topic every week next week's going to be about money and mental health and just how we've managed it and ways that you know if you are struggling with your mental health because of money um there's resources out there to help and we just kind of want to showcase that so yeah looking yeah. forward to next week um but yeah thanks jack for joining me it's been a really good episode thank you it's been stunning yeah brilliant to be here um, thank you very much <laughs> yeah great start to the podcast and yeah. yeah we're excited to come back next week so see so stay tuned and see you soon yeah make sure you you subscribe to the the podcast so you know when the next episode's out but we should be getting one out every week anyway so yeah uh, look forward to hearing my voice again <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.